in Leafy Galloway in southwest Scotland, a road marking team is in demonstration mode. They're laying high performance road markings, which are up to three times brighter at night than ordinary white lines. High performance road markings could be the answer for communities across Britain as local authorities and highways agencies switch off streetlights to save money and reduce carbon emissions. Why the Galloway Forest Park for this demonstration? Because it's home to Britain's only dark sky park, one of only 12 in the world. An area with extremely low light emissions, where both locals and visitors are encouraged to enjoy the dark by sky watching and stargazing. George Lee, National Director of the Road Safety Markings Association, watched the new lines being laid and drove the newly treated roads himself at night. But I think in the dark sky park of, uh, of Galloway, the darkest skies in Europe really do give a very vivid representation of what high performance road markings can do. Um, you can actually see the, the vibrancy of the road markings illuminating not just the road but the, uh, the whole environment surrounding the road and getting effect an effective tunnel of light uh, that produces really quite remarkable outputs. You actually can see that balance can be struck between optimal road safety, reduced carbon emissions, reduced costs to the local authorities and highway authorities, ultimately to taxpayers, um, and a reduction in light pollution as well. The road markings are designed to give more light back to the driver and to the pedestrian on the road surface than standard road markings uh, and therefore can really influence both driver behaviour and the level of safety that people will have on the road. It's in these small, tight, narrow rural roads uh, where there's a lot of uh, cornering and a lot of uh, crescents in the road and likes of that that you can truly demonstrate the capacity of road markings to provide a safe environment. They let the driver see where the road is going, especially with the, the use of edge lines. Um, and they allow the pedestrians to have a clear indication of where they should be positioned, and similarly cyclists as well. The markings we're putting down here are probably maybe up to three times as bright as you would get on a, a standard road marking. Uh, in fact, not even three times the price, and probably a price differential of no more than about 20% overall. You're actually seeing a, a relatively small increase in investment which is negligible compared to the savings that are made where lights are switched off um, are uh, removed entirely uh, from the highway's environment. Markings were laid between the isolated community of Glentrool in the Forest Park and the A714 highway. Happily for the villagers, there are now continuous edge markings for the first time on the minor road between them and their local pub, which is more than a mile away. A two-mile stretch of centre lines were put down on the A714 itself, and edge lines were also laid on an unclassified road deep in the forest. The team were from Glasgow-based Marcon Limited, whose general manager Scott Yule is the incoming chairman of the Road Safety Markings Association. As chairman, will he press the case for high-performance markings? I think so. I think it's something we've got available to us in the locker and we have to get out there to all the engineers that are there to show them that we can easily deliver this in a benefit to the road user. We don't have enough experience of driving on roads of this because there aren't enough high performance road markings out there. It's something we have to press on obviously over the coming years. What we can do here is prove to people that we can provide a low carbon uh, benefit without uh, in lieu of road safety, that we can provide them something that's, that's a lot better than the alternatives that are out there at the moment in terms of street lighting, which are high carbon, high initial cost and high maintenance. We can provide something without the detriment to road safety. The demonstration was welcomed by tourism official Keith Muir. For him and his colleagues in the Forestry Commission, keeping light emissions at a minimum is essential to maintain the official dark sky park status and to attract visitors. Very few people live in the area and as a result light pollution is minimised. It's all about controlling the light and making sure that the light, any light we have, is used in the right way. And that's what the dark sky park's all about. It's about educating people about light pollution and showing them the wonders of the universe above our heads. And here you can see the Milky Way stretching from one side of the horizon to the next. Almost every night it's clear. 
There are two angles I came from. There was a safety angle, which is a no-brainer. It's a case of you can, if you can help people guide themselves along a main road, you're going to save lives left, right and centre. But the big one, which links very neatly into the Dark Sky Park, is the fact that if we can demonstrate that good, proper line marking works, the need to maybe add these small few lights that are dotted around the place is negated. You don't need that. You, there's a chance to look at these and look at other options because street lighting is expensive. It's got a long-term aspect and serves it. It's, it's, you've got to build the units, you've got to put the units in the ground, you've got to supply it with power, you've got to maintain them. You put down good line marking, you get a one-off, well-performed product put in the road, which should last five, six years without being re-looked at. And, that save, and hopefully it'll save lives. 